what is up guys it's eric from the surf nj and for this video i'm going to take a little bit of a different approach you see normally the videos are like hey we're going fishing today and here's where we're going and here's what we're looking to do and here's what we're looking to catch and here's the problems in front of us and here's how we're going to overcome them and boom here's the end result but uh, today we're going to we're going to switch things up a little bit especially now that fluke season is like completely in full swing because we are at the height of it we are at the height of surf casting, trying to get flatties off of the surf. So instead of doing like five different fluke videos in the month of June, what I decided to do is visit five different spots and then hand select little clips from each fishing trip and kind of compile them into a, into a, a, a montage. And the point of this is not to kind of compile some sort of fluke fishing highlight reel, like, look at me, look how great I am at, at fishing. No, no, no. These are all hand selected for a particular reason. And that's the proof of point. So I'm going to let this footage roll. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about different tips, tricks, how to get them, mistakes that I made on camera. So remember, when you're watching this, every clip is there for a reason. Let's see if you can pick up on it. I will see you in about 10 minutes. Smack that. He ripped that one. Jesus. Come on. There you go. First flatty of the year. You might keep. You might keep. Yeah. Right. Exactly 17. Got some weight to it. Oh no! Oh, come the f on! Oh no! God damn it. Ah. Ah. Yeah, it looked nice. Yeah, that, 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 that had weight. That had yeah, weight. Bend on that. Yeah. Not 
that time, bitch. Not that time. Not that time. Nope, 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 nope. Get your monkey ass over here. that time. Jesus. Got him that time. Oh shit yeah. Shit yeah. Don't 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 fall. Don't fall. Oh my god. Shit, yeah. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. That'll keep. That wasn't even, I didn't even feel a hit. I just felt weight. How are we looking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just a little guy. But we're on the board at least. Right? Real, real, real. Oh yeah, you got one on, bro. You got one on. Real, real, real. 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 Oh man, Bubba. You got one? Come on, come on, come on. Real, real, real. Keep that rod tip up, rod tip up. Real. Real, real, real. Oh dude, bro, you got one. Yo, reel it up, bro. Reel it up, bro! Reel it up, bro! Yeah! <laughs> All right. All right, hold on. Yo, my can man. You, can you pull this one back to the object, please? My man. Huh? That's a fish? You got another one? Here, go, go, go. Reel, reel, reel. Reel, reel, reel. Real, real, real. Keep that rod tip up. Rod tip up. There you go, real. Come on. Yo, my man. Hit the green again. I got another one. You got another one. Yo, they, they, yo I think they, they, that's sweat. Yo, you got two fish, and each time they hit the green. I think we got to go green. 
Let's, let's go back. Let's go back to the uh, back to the tent there. Cause we gotta change your bait. Son, you need to get like that. No, no, he's 20 and a half, bro. 20 and a half. He Jay keeps, Fred. he keeps. So, there it is five different spots all around the great state of New Jersey, specifically in the month of June when things get hot and heavy on the beach when it comes to surf fishing for flatties. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to reference every single one of these clips to help me make the points I need to make when it comes to these tips, these tricks, these techniques, even mistakes that I made on camera. So all you new guys pay attention. Okay. This is for you. If you're just getting into surf fishing for fluke, this is for you. But even if you've been doing it for a couple years now, you should be able to take away a couple things, a couple a tip here, a trick there. That's going to help improve your game. All you veteran guys, you're good. You're all right. You're good. Tip number one, <laughs> there's, a, there's more than one way to do this. There really is. You're going to have people tell you and you're going to hear people say that there's only one way to fluke fish and their way of fluke fishing is the best way of fluke fishing. And if you are not fluke fishing the way that they fluke fish, then you are fluke fishing all wrong. Bullshit. I've been on the beach way too long and seen way too many people catch way too many fish using way too many techniques, all right? So there's more than one way to skin a cat. Don't believe me, just, just YouTube fluke fishing. Type it up, look it up, and maybe this guy's doing it the same as this guy, but this guy's doing something completely different, whereas this guy over here, I've never even seen that one before. You can take one of these, like a three quarter ounce, one ounce bucktail, put like a white zoom fluke, or maybe even your favorite gulp teaser behind it, and just skip it along the bottom. All you're doing is reeling and skipping, and just skip this, along the bottom and you're gonna catch fluke. Or you can take that same bucktail and just make a high-low rig out of it where you got your bucktail at the bottom about a foot, foot and a half up. You've got a little bit of a dropper loop with another teaser with another little piece of gulp on it. Cast it out, you don't gotta go far, but you sit there, barely retrieve. I mean, slow retrieve, but you're just jigging it. And literally all you're doing is this. That's gonna catch a fish. You can take one of these, right? You've seen this in every tackle shop. It's the old ball and chain where you have your weight that kind of looks like an eye, but chained to it is the hook. And basically you pop these up heavy and this comes up and flutters back down. It comes up and flutters back down. And, and if you do that, once again, you will catch fish. You can even use something as simple as this, your old fashioned paddle tail. This is a no live bait needed paddle tail. This is the five inch variety. It's great for striped bass. They make a three inch variety. You can pick it up at the tackle box in Hazlitt. Go see my man, Phil over there. He'll hook you up with some fluke killers. I know a guy, I, I, don't, I don't know a guy, but I see him at the same spot every year at Sandy Hook without fail. And he has a real unique way of fluke fishing. First of all, he has a plastic bag, back when you could get plastic bags in the state of New Jersey, right? And this plastic bag is filled with water and has live killies in it, right? And then this plastic bag is looped around his fanny pack, 
which is attached to shorts that are way too tight for anybody to be wearing fishing, all right? You just kind of got to have to picture it. It, it. It's a whole vibe, all right? And he does a rig similar to this. This is attached to your swivel. It's got a little bit of a dropper loop with a weight bank sinker on it. And then about two foot down, he'll either have a floating jig head or a hook with it, like a bead behind it. And what he does is he goes into his fanny pack, half-ass sort of bag of water, takes out a killy, doesn't even cast very far, just goes like this. And then he points his rod tip down and he tick, 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 tick. Bang, bang, bang. Every single time I see this dude, he outfishes me without fail. So find something that you like, find something that you feel comfortable with. And if you're on the beach and, you, and you're and you struggling, right? You're on the struggle bus that day, but you see somebody else catching fluke, watch what they're doing. Pay attention to what they're doing. If you're feeling neighborly, you can walk up to them and ask them. If they don't tell you they're being a dick, but just watch what they're doing because you can learn something. Even my rig. Here's another way to go fluke fishing, right? A little bit of a little bit of a modified high-low bank sinker at the bottom. I, I got this video on YouTube. It was the first video I ever made. Link in the description. You too can make this rig. A little bit of a twist to it. Kind of this skirt with a flare. Put a four-inch swimming grub on it. Just drag it along the bottom. Even that technique. I stole it. I stole it. One year, all right, the last bridge going over to Long Beach Island, I was underneath the bridge. It was me and another guy, and we were fishing. I wasn't catching who got. He was banging fluke after fluke after fluke, and he had a variation of that. But I was watching what he was doing, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, if I just move this up and switch this up and add it a little bit something, I bet you that would catch And I've been using it ever since. This is half the fun, finding a technique that works for you, but find it so you can perfect it so you can catch more fish. Tip number two, like they told me in business school, location, location, location. And quite frankly, it's the number one thing I'm asked on this YouTube channel. E, I'm new with this. Hey, can you hook me up with the spot? Can you tell me where to go? And listen, I can't spoon feed you the answers, but what I will do is give you the cheat code. And here's how you do it. Google Earth, all right? Listen, I'm going to make this brief because there's a lot of videos going over Google Earth and how they use it for fishing. Me, I use it on the mobile app during the winter when I'm trying to hide from the wife and kids in the bathroom. I'm looking up fishing spots because these pictures rotate. These satellite images rotate. So you will catch stretches of beach at low tide. And what's the one thing that you notice about most of those clips in the video, right? There's structure and there's deeper water. There's structure and there's deeper water. That's going to put you in the best spot to catch that W, to get that win, okay? Look at this, for instance. I've never fished there a day in my life, all right? I'm not going to tell you where it is, but I've never fished there. But look at the, look at the structure. Look at the deeper water. It's at low tide, but you can tell there's a deeper pocket of water. So when you got the last three hours of the incoming or the first three hours of the outgoing, that's going to be deeper water right there. I will bet anybody $20 that there is fish in there. Look at this. Look at this right here. I'm not gonna tell you where it is. Same thing. You have structure and you have deeper pockets of water. Now, is that an absolute truth? That you, do you have to have those two things in order to catch keeper fluke? Absolutely not. But we're just talking about percentage points here, okay? You can catch fluke in shallower water. And when I say shallower water, I mean three foot or less, as long as there's some sort of structure there, right? Because bait goes in and out. Fluke will usually be hiding around some structure to catch those little, little fry fish that are swimming around there. So you can find it. Or you can catch fluke fluke in deeper water with no structure right you can even catch keep a fluke with neither but again you have to use google earth to identify those deeper channels those cuts that last clip that last clip at island beach state park there was a 20 and a half incher dead ass low tide but I knew exactly where the channel was. I knew exactly where the cut was. Not because I've been doing this long enough and I can literally read the beach and kind of see where it, what's going on, but I can also verify it on my phone. And here's a fluke fishing hot take for you, okay? The where infinitely outweighs the how. Get good at finding the where. It doesn't take a lot to find the where. Just follow that formula. Deeper water, structure, satellite, low tide, 
you will find the places to go ahead and fish. Once you find the where, you can work on your how, whether it's that bucktail, that high load, the rig I use, because you are putting yourself in the best position to win. If you work on the how first, and you go to a place that's just all wrong, you're fishing a sandbar at low tide, you got no chance of catching fluke, right? You're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna think your how is messed up, you're gonna move on to something else. Now, find the where, then work on the how. Number three, and this is probably the only universal truth in fluke fishing, all right? We're treating this low rider style. We're going low and slow, low and slow. So what I mean by low is you want to be no, no more, no more than two foot off the bottom. And when, even when I say two foot off, the, I'm being so generous with that margin. For the best results, to so put yourself in the best position to win, you want to be 12 inches or below. Most of your popular fluke fishing techniques, whether it's skipping a bucktail off the bottom or jigging a high low off the bottom or doing whatever it is fanny pack guy is doing, will be somewhere between 12 inches and down to the bottom. And again, that's as we established, fluke are a super aggressive ambush predator. But you still got to be within the strike zone and the second part of that equation is slow listen you want to give this thing some time to dance in front of its face if you're skipping that bucktail or using that jig that high low jig or even my rig where you you're popping it once in a while you're in no rush all right don't be in a rush to zip that thing in there let it be out there play with it Give it a little bit of life. That color, that scent, that action, that's going to give it life and induce a strike from the fluke. If you're casting out and zipping these things like an epoxy jig, like you're fishing for albies, you just, you, 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 you're never going to catch fish. Number four, the color of your gulp, your bait, whatever you might be using, normally, usually, eight times out of ten, doesn't matter until it does. And that thing can be the one deciding factor between catching fish and getting absolutely skunked. Normally, usually, eight times out of ten, your standard issue white is going to get the job done. They also make these four-inch grubs in like a pink-white sort of swirl. That's another one I really like to use. But sometimes, even though that's supposed to work, it just doesn't. Most of those video clips that you saw was me using either that pink swirl one or a standard issue, just pearl white. But the last clip, right, when we're on Island Beach State Park, I'm there with my boy, right? Proud daddy moment. My boy's out there with me. He, I'm, I'm trying to get him on some fish so he can catch his first fluke. It doesn't have to be a keeper as long as he goes and he gets something. And there I am using the pearl white. And with his, I had like a double high-low rig. And I just reached into the old bug jug, you know, the old with all the colors in it. And whenever I grabbed and reached out, that was what was going on his hook. Well, wouldn't you know... Like this kid is sitting there hooking up twice in a row. Meanwhile, me and every other schmuck on the beach using white is catching nothing. And that's when I noticed that all the fish he was catching was on the green. And it dawned on me, oh, we're having one of those days. So we switched it up and we went with the green. And I can tell you in all honesty, for the rest of the day, he was hitting fish, I was hitting fish, everybody else on the beach that was using white was not even getting a bite. And that keeper, that 20 and a half inch or a dead ass low tide was just because I decided to switch to the green. I wasn't doing anything special. I wasn't doing anything fancy. I was just paying attention to what worked. So if you're out there and you're doing the technique that you're used to and you're in the spot that you know is going to catch fish and you're going low and slow, but for some reason it's just not happening for you, try switching up the colors. My suggestion, start with the pearl white, but always, always, always have chartreuse green and some sort of pink. Maybe try out something a little bit more natural looking, right? Where it's like, this jerk shad with this nice little gray fleck kind of looking a little realistic. Or these, these like four or five inch copper penny shred. I've had a lot of sneaky success with these things, especially in dirty water where there's a lot of stuff in the water. So you don't want to drag it, but you plop it in one area and then you just bing, bing, bing. And this thing goes up. That's neither here nor there. Moral of the story is. Color usually doesn't matter until it does. And when it does, it really...
matters, okay? So don't leave yourself naked with one style of gulp, one color of gulp, just one style, with just one gulp, all right? Bring a variety pack. Tip number five, keep your baits looking as clean and as natural as possible. When I say natural, I'm not talking about like the jerk shad, although you can use it, or the copper penny shrimp, although you can use it, because normally it's something like this, right? What, what the hell is this even supposed to be? Is this supposed to be a minnow? Is this supposed to be an eel? Is this a spider crab? What, 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 what even is this? I'm just talking about the presentation in general. If you reel up your rig and you've got like all along the knots, you've got that little like base knot, all my Barnegat Bay people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or if you reel up and on the hook is like a Superman cape of green algae, all my Manasquan Inlet people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Clean that shit off, okay? You spend all this money on the fluorocarbon, at least I do. I like to use fluorocarbon, okay? It makes the line virtually invisible. Well, it's not virtually invisible if you got shit all over it. You're investing all this money in this cigar blue label stuff. Just take a moment to clean it off. Also, when I say natural, I mean the way it's presented on the hook, okay? So if you take your, your green gulp, I'm gonna use my rig for example, right? So this is a three-aught bait holder hook, your four-inch Berkeley gulp grub. Boom, slide it on in there. You want this to be straight. You want it to be straight. So when this teaser skirt or your bucktail skirt, right? Straight, straight. That's what I mean by a natural presentation. If you pull up, I, I fish with one guy who does this all the time. If you pull up and your shit's like that and you cast it back in, you are not even remotely close to putting yourself in the best position to win because all this is going to do is helicopter around. The fluke's going to look up and be like, what the hell? Was, was that a helicopter? Tip number six. Do not ever give up on a cast. Some of the biggest fluke that I have caught have been the times where I am paying the least amount of attention. Because listen, we all, we're all guilty of it, right? We're all kind of fluke fishing, looking off in the distance, looking at that osprey, looking at that cute girl in a bikini, looking over here, you're not really paying attention. And you kind of give up on a cast, right? You're almost to the, to the, to the beach lip there and you're just kind of reeling it, whatever. Some of the biggest fluke I've ever caught are right on that beach lip, and I'm not even paying attention, talking to my kid, and bang, you get hit with a fluke. As we have already clearly and repetitively established, and I'm going to keep repeating it over and over again, fluke are a super aggressive ambush predator by nature. So they're a fluke just sitting there on that beach lip waiting for a big wave to come over and all these sand fleas come at them and they can start picking them off and eating them like potato chips. That's why you can never give up on a cast. You do not give up on a cast until you literally see your bucktail, your high-low, the bottom of your high-low rig, or whatever fanny pack guy is doing until you see that out of the water because there are literally doormat keeper fluke just a matter of feet from you, just right there in front of you. And if you give up on those casts, you will never see that fish. And when you're fishing for fluke, make sure you are fan casting. Again, super aggressive ambush predator. So they're all kind of laying stationary. So if you're fishing a particular spot, you can't just fish here, fish here, fish here, and then move on. You literally need to hit every five minutes on the clock, starting at nine o'clock. Boom, 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 boom. You wanna make as many casts to cover as much ground as possible. And if you don't get any hits, then you move over 20, 30 feet and you start the fan cast again. Do not ignore nine o'clock and three o'clock. Nine o'clock and three o'clock are some of my favorite casts to make, especially if no one's around and you're not gonna tangle anybody up and maybe you've got a little bit of a curve, right, to the beach. Because as we previously established in the last tip, the fluke are sometimes just sitting on that beach lip. So if you can cast at nine o'clock or you can cast at three o'clock and work about 30 yards of beach lip, I'm, I promise you, that's one of the best casts you can make. But remember, these things are lying in wait. 
You have to find them. So when you're casting, don't just keep casting in one spot over and over and over again, especially if you're on the beach and you're not on a jetty and you, you, you have the flexibility to stick and move, but just make sure you're hitting every five minute on the clock dial. All right, tip number, I don't even remember. What are we on? What, eight? Are we on eight? I, I can't even remember. I got two more tips for you, okay? You don't need to spend a lot of money to be an effective fluke fisherman, okay? I know it's just natural, us by nature, whether, whether you're a cyclist or whether you're a gamer or whether you're an artist, whatever you're into, it's, by, it's just kind of like human nature to want to have the top of the line stuff and the expensive stuff and the performance stuff because you think in your mind it gives you that placebo effect of like if I got the top gear that means I'm ready and I'm going to catch a lot of fish. Fluke fishing is by far one of the cheapest ways to enjoy fishing. I'll use my own rod and reel as a, as a testament to that because normally I like to use a, a pen conflict to 3,000 for the fluking rod, 4,000 for the striped bass rod because it's lightweight. I got a bad back and I'm usually out there all day. And the lighter the setup is, the better off I'm going to be, the more my back. So you, you get where I'm going with it. But during the shortage, because everything had a shortage, bro. During the shortage, I, I couldn't find one. So I went up to Tackle World, I believe it is, up there in North Jersey. And they had this Pen Pursuit 3, 3,000. I had never heard of this thing, but it kind of looked like a pen conflict too, and it cost $60. It's a $60 reel. I've had it for the last, what, two years now, and it's been working just fine. There's no need for me to go out and get a van stall to go fluke fishing or a Stella to go fluke fishing. You can go with a cheap set. My son is catching fluke off of the surf with a $120 setup. He got from the real seat in Brielle. You can do the same exact thing. It doesn't cost a lot of money to go fluke fishing. The how and the where outweigh whatever you're holding in your hands. So especially if you're a beginner and you just kind of want to try it out, don't go nuts. Go cheap. Visit one of your local tackle shops. Support local New Jersey business. Go by their recommendation. Say, yo, I got a budget of like a buck fifty. What do you got for me? And they will set you up with the rod, the reel, the line. The, the, the most expensive thing you're going to buy is this damn fluorocarbon. And, and I would splurge. So, last but not least, and, and listen, if you made it this far, I want to sincerely thank you for sticking with me this long. Because honestly, while I'm shooting this thing, this thing feels like it's going to be way longer than anything I put out or way longer than anything I expected. But this... Is a video that I had in my mind in the chamber since last year. And June only comes around once a year. And I didn't drive all over the state of New Jersey to, uh, to, 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 to not do this video. So please hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Share if you can. Uh, I appreciate your time. And we're going to get into the last tip. And it's the hook set. And I remember when I was younger... I mean, this is the thing that took me the most time to wrap my head around and get used to and, and really get a feel for it. Because fluke aren't like striped bass. I mean, with striped bass, look at my previous video. When striped bass hit it, man, they hit it. When a blue fish hits it, bang, he whacks it. There's plenty of fish in your area, no matter what part of the country you're in, that when they hit it, they hit it. Fluke, it, it, it's just different, man. They got so many, like, little, there's so many nuances to the way that they attack a bait you know sometimes they see it go by and they just like they they donkey punch it and boom you're on like that like that first clip on long beach island man you when you feel a fluke smack it they're aggressive they go after it they hit it but then there's the one like in asbury park which granted what wasn't a big fish it, it was not a big fish but a lot of times there's and there's underwater camera footage to support this when you when you're when you're jigging along right You've got your, your high-low, and when you're jigging along, the fluke will actually come up, grab this, and swim at the same pace of your retreat, right? So you're sitting there retrieving, and you're jigging, but all of a sudden, you're just starting to feel like a little bit of unnecessary resistance to the jig. But you know you're not stuck, and you know you're not snagged, because you're continuing to reel in. 
but just what the fluke does is it sees it, it puts its mouth around it, and then it swims with it, and while you're jigging, you just feel a little unnecessary weight. And then there's the third one, and, and probably the most likely or, or frequent of the three, and that's the triple tap, all right? And it can go bang, 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 or it can go bang, 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 all right? Did you get that? Bang, 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 or bang, bang, bang. Either way, three taps. I, listen, I don't have much video evidence to support this, but what I suspect is when you get those little kind of quick rapid taps, bang, 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 or bang, 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 so the first hit you feel is a fluke actually grabbing it. The second hit you feel is a fluke gulping it. And the third hit is the fluke either moving left or right. There is a lot of ways a fluke will attack a bait. And it is going to be virtually impossible for me to communicate the feel of it, right? You have to experience it on your own. You have to go out there and feel what it's like when a fluke smacks it or the triple tap, or when, a, or when you're just feeling some unnecessary weight and when to set the hook. But what I can tell you and what I can communicate to you over the YouTubes, over the videos right now, is when you set the hook, set the f hook. When that fish comes up and donkey punches it, you still, you still have to bang, set that hook. Because you know what happens if you don't? Go back and watch that first Sandy Hook clip. That fish absolutely smacked. And if you're used to surf fishing the way that I am and surf fishing for fluke, you know a keeper when you got one. You know the weight of a keeper when you got one. And that was a keeper fish. But go back and watch it. He thumped it. He hit it. But what didn't Dum Dum do over here is bury the hook and I lost the fish. If you feel that like triple tap, boom, 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 or boom, 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 like I did over there at Avon by the sea, right? And set the hook, but I missed him. But I, but I missed it. You still have to set the hook. But I missed him. And if you do miss him, if you do miss him, you go ahead and you sit there. You don't move a thing. Don't reel in anymore. Just, just make sure the line is taut and just sit there and jiggle it. If you missed him the first time, there's a good to fair chance it's still in his line of vision. And again, because fluke or say it with me. Fluke are super aggressive, ambush predator by nature. They will go back after it and you can go ahead and whack them again. Or if you're jigging and you're just like, why am I feeling some sort of odd resistance? I didn't feel a bite. I didn't feel anything. Bang! Set, just set it. Just set the hook. This is your opportunity to be violent. Don't pussyfoot around. Put your back into it. Give it some flair. All right, bang, set the hook. Maybe it was nothing. Maybe you're feeling phantom taps or, or that little resistance was just a piece of seaweed. Or you, But either way, set it. Because fluke will give you very violent, the bigger the fluke get, the more violent the head shakes are. And they will shake you off. They will shake that hook right out of its mouth if it's not absolutely buried in there. So set the hook, set it like you mean it, okay? Express yourself, be creative. Pretend you're being graded on your hook set and they're given extra credit for style points. Sure, you may look like a complete asshole when you go for an over dramatic hook set and you pull up a fluke that can barely fit inside of a hot dog bun, but you're just practicing good habits. All right, so so is that, is that are we done here? Is that it? Did I make all the points I wanted to make? I, I, I think I did. If you're a like intermediate fl fluke fisherman off the surf, uh, I hope you picked up a few things. In this video, if you're new and you have any further questions, please feel free to email me from the surf nj at gmail.com. I promise you I will get back to you and answer your questions. But if I'm going to tie a bow on this entire thing, number one, fluke fishing in the state of New Jersey is one of the easiest, most enjoyable, most affordable, family-friendly types of fishing there is in this state, and I can't recommend it enough. If you're just doing it for you, great. You do you. Figure it out. Figure out the where. Find out the how. So on and so forth. Have fun, you know, you know, just learning as you go. But if you're a dad and you want to spend some time with the kids, your son, your daughter, you want to take them to the beach, fluke fishing is absolutely one of the most enjoyable ways to go about it because they don't need to cast far. You don't need to spend a lot of money. And, and, and if you can figure out the where, they're going to have a ball. Even if they're shorts, they're just going to have a ball pulling up fish. 
And lastly, what I would like to say is nothing in fishing is 100%. There's a, there's a saying out there, and it's obnoxious, that 90% of the fish are caught by 10% of the fishermen. I know it's like, like I cringe every time I hear it, but it's absolutely so true. Because all you're doing in fishing is just stacking percentage points, right? All you're doing is stacking percentage points to put yourself in the best position to win. Am I using the right color? Am I using the right technique? Am I in the right spot? Is my line clean? Am I fanning all my casts to cover as much ground as I possible? Am I not giving up on any casts? Does my bait look natural? Is my line clean? So on and so forth. All you're doing is stacking little percentage points that are going to help you catch fish. Even if you stack everything right, even if you stack everything correctly, you still might only be at like 23%. So it's not a guarantee that even if you do everything right, that you're going to hook up or you're going to have one in the cooler or you're going to be eating fluke tonight. But one thing I can guarantee you with certainty is that that one of those things is off, your percentage whew, plummets. All right? All that hard work you did, making sure all those things line up to put yourself in the best position to win, one thing's off, it's over, Johnny. If your color's not right, if, you, if your bait's all crooked, you're never going to catch. If, 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 if you're not in the right spot, if you cast it into a sandbar during low tide, you just, you, you, you're never going to hook up. So all these things you do, and there's a lot more out there to learn, and there's a lot more out there to see, but keep stacking those percentage points. Keep doing the little things right. There's no guarantee doing the little things right will, where, will get you to where you got to be. But if you don't do the things right, you will never catch fish, period. All right? That's it. That's all I got. I, I am sweating my tits off in this barn. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but I appreciate everybody that has hung with me for this long. Uh, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Help me out. All right? Help your boy out. And so uh, Next time, uh, tight lines, and I will see you on the beach.